So let me show you how we build a panel like this. So technically, let's start here. Uh, we all start somewhere, right? So Ritel and Eplan, we really work together on this one. So strong partners to build your panel. Let's see how we do something like this. So first of all, if you have an Eplan Pro panel, you can create simply a new layout. So that's gonna be my second layout here, simply like this. Go ahead, you have your 3D environment. Now, where do I pick my parts from? Directly from my data portal, or if you have already loaded these in the past, you just go about and pick the part number as you need it from here. So 8608 is the panel that I wish to use. I can actually place a couple of them side by side, and if I do so, I can even identify them individually as being my first, my second X enclosure uh, within our IEC environment. I can also say, okay, this is gonna be my A6. So let's type in A6, which is my mounting location that reflects very well this one, or even this one here, which could be my A7. This pretty much sorts it out uh, on this one. So this could be precisely A6 and the other one could be A7. Okay, so this is my S7, 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 I'll make it A7. Um, just reflecting the enclosure itself. So here we have, of course, multiple enclosures, the first one and the second one. Let's start. Number one thing that I would do is eventually put some sidewalls. These are simple accessories I can add. And here inside the, the sidewalls, I can pick different walls. Here the 200 by 800. I can decide whether I want it on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, just place it down there and your accessory will show up, boom, like this. If there's something you want to add something on, uh, TS8 is actually built out of frames. These frames, I'm gonna use here the left front frame and I will activate more precisely the left outside here to actually position some smaller side plates. These are accessories uh, that can be placed in various heights. The one I'm looking for is a 200 height. So it's a 9673082 part number. I do a quick search. It will drag down or drag out of my library here, the module itself. And here we go, we place it. So of course, if you look at the bottom, the first one is at 25. 75. I'm going to go on the fourth one here, place this one there, and I'm going to place a second one right there also, and you can see how they nicely snap to. And there is another thing I'm going to place on top of this is a um, small bracket. This particular bracket here is a 9673405 part number, which also is on the data portal, by the way, so I, I picked it up a little bit earlier and I will just place it. Now, when I place it, it's gonna be placed exactly over that hole, not exactly in that rotation, so I'm gonna rotate this by maybe 90 degree, let's see. This might not be the right rotation, so the rotation I would love to use uh, is minus 90. So you just try it out, and you can see what the rotation is, and there we go, it's perfect. Now I can basically place it there with one small exception, when we talk about the uh, X, Y, Z positioning here, I want to place it with the placement of not only of minus um, 90 degree, but I want to also lift it by 1.5 millimeter, which is the um, size of, or the uh, height of, of this uh, object. So by placing it here, you will see, I'm going to do it both of them at the same time. There we go place this one also in the same hole, there we go. You will see the difference if you do not add the uh, 1.5, I'll show you right away. In this case here, so it's gonna be the left or right view, right? It will uh, basically uh, display this uh, very nicely here. You can see this one here is nicely set on top of the other one, whereas the other one here is matching over it. So what did I do wrong on the um, second one? So nothing really except for placing that bracket on top. Um, so if I activate this directly again, let me just reposition this guy here. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna take the object as it is, move it with the V, 
It's going to move again, same as before, but I'm going to go with the control W, add exactly what I was adding before, 1,5 millimeters, and just place it on top of the same point. And now it's going to be placed correctly. Now, this one, when we look at it, this is how it looks like uh, from a 3D aspect. I'm going to add right onto this, I'm going to add like a small um, panel that we can uh, place uh, objects on. So that panel that I place, uh, what was the part number? I'm just going to go and get it. Give me two seconds. Um, this is a specific back plate that actually goes there. I have to place it. The part number, I'm just missing. Oh, I got it here. It's 9673450. Just select it. That's basically the uh, bottom plate, which will basically be my uh, individual floor. And you can see something. You can't see it right now, but let me just turn it on. It's a mounting aid. I'm going to go here and just place it like this. Boom. Place it. There we go. Place it again. Boom. Like this. And now what I just did is I created very quickly here these objects here. Now, I can place it on the other side um, to finish it up, but just as it is right now, already, if I go back here to my um, individual um, pages and I run the reports, I will basically see for the A6 and for the A7 what kind of material I have. This gets generated automatically from Eplan, so you can generate all kinds of different views. Uh, not only the 3D view, uh, but also individual bill materials, which can be collected as a whole, like a summarized parts list, we name it, or a parts list. If you do use the page sorting by mounting location, this will split the parts list into individual parts list, one by one for each mounting location. This is pretty much what I did here. So you have a new mounting location here. These are the parts that I just placed here, and the right quantity is also there. So this is the kind of thing that we can do with ePlan and ProPanel. Thank you. This was Roland from ePlan Canada.